Red Dragon Time. Time for Red Dragon. Dragon, which is red. It is time for it. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I kind of don't want to do the intro. I just want to jump right in. But hello. Welcome to an anime watch along. The way that this works, and I need to change the timer, is that uh, I've got the anime up right in front of me right here. And I can see what's happening. But anytime I press play... You can't see what's happening because of, you know, copyright and things. But there's a timer in the top left corner of the screen that tells you where I am in the episode. So you go to Netflix, you load up the episode yourself, and you follow along with me by keeping track of where the timer is. Every once in a while, I'll have more to say than I can just get across, you know, over the course of the actual episode running. And I'll say something like three, two, one, pause. And we'll both pause at the same time. I will maybe scroll a little bit back and forth to sort of find exactly the things I want to talk about, and then I'll say the things I want to talk about, then I'll pick a time, a hopefully reasonably reachable time, where we both will go to, and then I'll say three, two, one, unpause, and then we resume from there, and we sort of watch the episodes together in this way. It's clunky. It is very inconvenient on mobile phones, but this is my relaxation lazy channel where I don't want to put in any more work than I absolutely have to, so that's the a trade-off that I'm willing to accept. <sighs> It's Red Dragon time, though. It is Red Dragon time. It is time for the party's bonds to be tested, for their competences and their skills to shine, and for the plan to go off without a hitch. Just absolutely perfectly get Fallon back. She gets revived. Everyone uh, travels home happy. And no twists or unforeseen circumstances of any kind are going to transpire whatsoever. This, I firmly believe... <laughs> Oh, and I don't want to waste any more time with the intro. I just want to watch and see what happens. So, all the way back to the very, very, very start before the Netflix logo and everything. Three, two, one, go. A Netflix series. Cold open. Cool. Tension. 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 And now intro. <laughs> It is funny that Fallon and um, Namara and Samurai Guy, whose name I keep forgetting, uh, because it hasn't been reinforced to me 5,000 times yet. Um, it is funny that they're such an, like, a major part of the, of the intro and such complete non-presences in the actual plot of like, the first major bits of the first um, season. But it does, like, it does to me imply that, like, they have ambitions to continue this before beyond the first season. There's a lot of characters in the intro who just simply have not been introduced in the anime yet. So presumably they know that they must, like, they must know that they're going to get to those, right? That they're going to get to take the story far enough to, to bring those characters in. Because otherwise, why would they have spent the time character designing them and, like... Because, like, even including characters in something as simple as an intro like this requires that you have, like, reference art and, like, uh, like model sheets and all that kind of shit. Well, it doesn't require it, but you would usually do that for an animation production. Um, whereas, if you know, if you only know that you have the one season, you would probably sort of, like, focus very strongly in on only the characters that are going to be relevant for the season. So, I'm taking that as a sign. I'm not delusional. There will be a Dungeon Meshy season two. I don't know, actually. I haven't kept up with the news. So, how how insane am I going to go about the dragon's animation, huh? Ooh, I like it already. Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> the look the dragon gave them. I like that it doesn't have wings, too. That's a cool design for a dragon. Ooh, 3D camera. Very efficient. Ah, shit. Fuck. Okay, I'm sorry. Three, two, one. Pause. I just... I just... I just want to look at... I just want to look at how the camera is handled here. Okay, so it looks to me like... Because this is a shot. Like, first of all, not hand animated. These are all 3D assets, but like... The compositing here is real fucking good. It's a very brief shot, right? But that's the thing, like, Dungeon Meshi, there is plenty of 3D present in it. Right? Like, I've, I've seen it used on, on like, complicated objects, like, like, doors that shut. Um, like, very rigid objects that sort of need to move. But it's been also very, very sparing. Like, they've been really, really, really subtle about the places where they employ... 3D animation over traditional 2D animation. This is one of the places where it's 3D animation, but it looks to me like they spent a lot of time. Yeah, I don't think that light is... It looks to me like they spent a lot of time creating this 3D environment and, like, hand-painting its textures. I wouldn't be surprised if, like, the light in these scenes is not like rendered in engine but is like baked into the textures of the thing that's kind of what it looks like to me a little bit and that's like that's a real good way to use 3D I feel this is not a 3D shot um like just for these brief moments of like okay we we have like a we want to do a first person point of view thing of the characters running and then turning right and that's like okay that really getting that first person effect right like that really that personal effect of being inside the head of someone who's running that fps video game player effect doing that with 2d is definitely achievable it can be done but that will be a fuck ton of resources to commit to just like a brief shot like that render it out in, a, in like a in like a 3d environment create like and do some real fucking solid compositing work to make to make to make it look very similitudinous like to make the to make the environment not look 3d like because like if if they had i feel like if they hadn't done a bunch of work making those textures look absolutely perfect with the rest and by the way i wouldn't be surprised if yeah um making the textures look absolutely perfect with the rest of what's going on um, and the lighting and everything, if they hadn't gotten that exactly right, that shot would have stood out like a sore fucking thumb. But it was so smooth, it was practically, for me at least, practically unnoticeable, right? Like, yeah, it was 3D, but it didn't, it didn't stand out, right? Like, it didn't take you out of the sense of watching a 2D animated cartoon. It, it blended really, really nicely. Ooh, that was impressive. I like that. Three, two, one, go. Whoa. Shit, sorry. I did that wrong. I was supposed to use my hotkey. I wasn't supposed to click the play button. <laughs> uh, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on. There, okay. Ugh, I, I, when I click the button, I, like, I move my mouse down and I click the play button in the actual player. I'm not supposed to do that. I'm supposed to use my hotkey so it swaps the thing back so that, you know, I don't... Okay. 21, minus 2155. Let's try this one again. Three, two, one, go. Oh, that's cool. I want to have a D and D campaign where my character, where like the characters, can use a cooking pan to resist fire. Don't do that, Lyos. Uh, 
Ooh, good animation. Three, two, one, pause. These running animations. <laughs> oh, first of all, hand animating the fucking passage going past is just another fucking studio trigger. Flex those bastards. God damn. Let's again, that's a shot like the walls going past. I would imagine probably to make it easier, they rendered it out in 3D and then traced over it to make that easier to do. But that's the kind of thing, that's the kind of thing that you would do with 3D rather than hand draw it. But no, no fucking studio trigger, man. <laughs> Look at Senshi's face. Oh, freaking studio trigger. Oh, I love it when they just let their animators go god mode. Like, quiet god mode, too. Oh, and the, the, the... Okay, so I, I haven't talked much about this uh, yet in these things, but animation frame timing, right? So, Disney animation runs at 24 frames per second. That's called animate... Look, like, not all Disney animation, but generally runs at 24 frames per second. That's called animating on ones. That means every single time a frame of a film reel goes by, which goes by at 24 frames per second, something happens, right? Like, animation changes on every one frame, there's a new frame of animation drawn, right? Most animation you'll see in most circumstances will be animated on twos or threes or fours, right? So that'll be every other frame, every third frame, every fourth frame, depending on the circumstances, sometimes even maybe fifth or sixth frame, sort of depending on exactly what it is that you want to do. Um, and when you're animating on twos, right, that means that if the, f the film file is playing back at 24 or usually 30 frames per second uh, in an online web player, that means that there will be frames when nothing is happening, right? And that having frames, static frames showing on the screen where nothing happens, that can be kind of static, right? Like that, that can lead to the animation not feeling as fluid as it otherwise would be. So what do you do if you're animating on, for example, on twos, is you do this. You see how the characters are not all moving on the exact same frame all the time? How Chilchuck and Senshi sometimes move on different frames than Lyos does? That's a way to smooth over the, um, the gap in between the frames and make sure that even if not everything is moving in every single frame, every single frame that goes by something is moving, right? And there, you can also see that they're doing that with the camera, like the shaky camera thing that they're doing there. Like, all of that is just stuff that keeps the keeps the frame alive, right? Like, keeps something happening. Um, and those differential frame timings help, like, smooth that out and make it feel even more alive and even more active. Uh, and that's the technique. Like, that's not... This is not the first time they've done this. They do this everywhere. Like, if you slow down and you frame by frame your way through any kind of TV animation, you will see this technique used absolutely everywhere. I just like pointing it out because it's such it's such a clever thing to do. Like, okay, like, if, if we want to make things feel a little bit smoother, then we'll, like, we'll animate on every frame in between each frame. Oh, I'm sorry. Hang on. I need to... <laughs> my cat wants to be let out. Yeah, yeah, I know. Hi, sweetie. You usually want to come into my... Ah, cats. They're usually so eager to get in here, but then, like, they come in here, I close the door, and then they walk around for a bit, and then they're like... And of course, once I open the door to let them out, they'll just sit there and stare at it. Little bastards. Anyway, uh, differential frame timings. They're everywhere in, in, in modern animation. They're a really cool technique. I really like it. So I just wanted to, I just wanted to point it out, like where and when it's used and what it does. Because um, you'll see the same thing like in the, in the fight scene between um, Marcel and the Undine. Like lots of differential frame timings they're used to give that scene like that amazing fluidity that it had. Anyway, let's keep watching. Three, two... One, go. <laughs> that running animation. Marcel, aren't you standing on top of the... Wow. 
Oh, oh, she has a little flying spell. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it. It's not dead. Kill it. You have to kill it. You have to go get close. That's when everything went wrong. He took a bad hit on the head. Ooh. Yeah, the sword would be a little scared, wouldn't it? Nope. <laughs> oh, there goes the axe. <laughs> Love that frame. Ooh. Hold on to it, Lyos. Trigger animation. Ooh. Oi! Buddy boy. Hold on to the knife, dipshit. <laughs> Ooh, you got the eye. Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, the fucking animation. Jesus. Fuck me. 
Oh, they're pulling out the stops now. Oh, this like this is where they put all the fucking budget. Holy shit. Look at this. Good boy, Lyos. Getting serious now, are we? <laughs> Tying Kenshin to his... <laughs> to his hand. Understandable. Grab the knife, grab the knife, grab the knife, grab the knife. Oh, fuck me running. This is cool. Ooh, no leggy. Ooh, that's got to hurt. Ah, oh, that's the anatomy of a good fight, too. Hey, flashback time.
Oh. Interesting. <laughs> oh, they're sweet. That's very sweet. No. not <laughs> oh senshi <laughs> Again, this casualness about the body, about, like, death, about healing, about... It's such a cool part of the world building. It's such a cool part of the story. <laughs> well, Marcel is the only one who doesn't know. Sure would be a shame if there was some kind of twist. That's a big meal. The dragon itself almost like another dungeon. I 
I like that a lot. Like the dragon itself as this other dungeon to traverse. <laughs> so gross. It's also cool. Ugh. Like an owl. Ooh. <laughs> oh, right then. <laughs> hmm. So this is where, like, the theme of food comes full circle, right? Like, because we've seen the party going through the dungeon, making food out of the monsters, right? Like, using them, digesting them, using them as fuel, essentially, um, to do the things that they do in the dungeon, to power their you know, to power their adventuring. Now it comes full circle. Now it comes back around, right? Now it's, you know, one of our own has been used that way. <laughs> has been consumed that way. Um, and that's, mm, right? Like, that's, that's, the, that's the other side of the theme, right? Like, it's we've been so casual about, like, the use of of monster parts and their innards as like as a consumptive thing and so now we're confronted with like this this extremely literal symbol of death right like this just... and it's horrifying right it's horrifying but it's also the visual language of this scene right of what the characters are doing it's not that different from the visual language of what they've been doing to monster corpses so far, right? It's like everyone's sort of sorting through, preparing the different things, like carving the monster up, like, and it's so there. There's this. There's this sense of of the theme coming full circle, of like eat or be eaten, and like the like that that you're all part of this cy ecosystem cycle thing. Um, and it's like oh, thematically just just really good, but also I did I just. I had there were so many times during the fight with the dragon where I wanted to pause and I wanted to talk about a million things but I couldn't get myself to do it cuz I just wanted to watch I just wanted to watch especially like this bit with with Senshi and Chiltrook like pulling the sword off the ground where, like, you really get to see, like, some lead animators having some fucking fun with these characters, right? And, like, look look at the angularity and, like, the, the, the gnarled stubbiness of the way that Senshi is rendered here. Like, very different from how he's usually rendered. 
in the show. Like, you can, there's so much more. And it gives him a kind of visual brutality here, right? Um, like a real sense of fury and power. And this is such classic trigger animation. Like that pushing super extreme, really hard up into the camera with like lots and lots of surface rendering. That's so, that's a very classic trigger move. His hands here essentially like fucking leather, right? <laughs> poor little Kensuke's eyes <laughs> poor baby he didn't sign up for any of this and then the throw right you get that wind up you get that this is something I, I've saw a, 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 I've seen animators discuss like this style of animation as a as a style of tension and release, right? So here we have, like, this wind-up where Senshi's, like, he's winding up the throw and it's, like, going very, very slowly, slowly winding up to it, slowly winding up to it, and then, all at once, yoosh, right? And, and you can see that again. That's, that, that is, again, all over animation in anime. It's, like, this, this, this style, especially in action animation, of doing tension and release, tension and release, tension and release. You can see it, like... um when like a character delivers a big hit on another character, then you get this this moment of like the hit lands and then there's this like things slow down, there's this tension as things are pushing against each other, and then all of a sudden, snap, release, and that's when the character goes flying, right? Um and once again, animator is just fucking flexing by render by drawing the fucking environment, you motherfuckers over a trigger. Drawing the fucking 3D environment with a camera pulling backwards all by God's forsaken shit fucking ass goddamn hand. <laughs> Once again. <laughs> Poor Kensuke. And like the use, like this again is classic trigger. You see this all over Kill la Kill, for example. Um this use of like scratchy action lines to really sort of like and not just lines that follow the direction of movement, but you can see these cross lines as well to highlight the speed and the motion of uh, what's going on. Again, tension, where it like slowly setting up the tension. And then boom, snap, all at once. And once again with the hands like leather, right? Like craggy stone that's been carved. Again with the movement lines. Accentuating, emphasizing the motion. As Lyos finally grabs his sword, right? And the way that, like, the character animator is navigating, like, Lyos has this giant pan, heavy pan that he's moving on. So as he's going through the wall, the animator is paying attention to, okay, he needs to negotiate that weight. So what do we do? We swing the pan, use the momentum, propel ourselves forward, and then we go, right? Just absolutely phenomenal animation, this. Also this, like, just the Incidental things like the dragon tearing down a wall. Bonk! <laughs> Concussion! That's why it hurts so much to heal. <laughs> to heal the poor boy. Ow. <laughs> and, like, little things like when he collapses onto Senshi. Pay attention to the beard, the hair. Oof. He sort of fluffs down into it, and then, like, you can see the way that it pushes him back up afterwards. Like, just, oh... Gorgeous. It's gorgeous in motion. Like, especially Senshi in these scenes is, like, really getting... Like, the, the character animators are really sort of pushing using the helmet, using, like, his his squat nature and, like, the flatness of him. Really pushing an aesthetic for the character. It's just like, oh, fuck me running. And these frames, too, like, when they... <laughs> and it's the tone that they navigate during this whole scene. Like, there's a lot of comedy bits in there. 
that then sort of swing back to deadly seriousness. And again, like the animators having so much fun with these frames. Because, like, look how rough the characters are drawn. And I don't just mean that there's lots of, like, lines and scribbles everywhere, but, like, how rough the anatomy, how rough the, the sort of general outline of them is. Which sort of, like, again, it helps sell the vibe of this flash frame, like, of, of this, like, still frame that they're using for this, that the characters are kind of distorted and look weird and kind of lumpy. Like, that sells the vibe, the feeling that, like, the the chaotic, fearful rush of adrenaline that you're supposed to get from this, right? Like, that's... It all helps do that. And it all, like... And it is only just, like, a completely static picture, right? That they sort of do, like, a... Right? They just pan up the picture three times, right? But it's a completely static picture. But because of the way all all this rendering is done, all this scribbling all this drawing like like because of the dynamism of the posing because of the the video compression artifacts that completely ruin how it looks um you still get such a sense of movement and motion out of it right oh what a fucking fight what a fucking fight Absolutely fantastic, genuinely. <laughs> and the fact that Laios just immediately fucking drops the pan because <laughs> he didn't figure that it would be hot. Like <laughs> that also feels like a very D and D party thing, right? Like the party comes up with this plan, like, and the the DM like the the dragon is breathing fire at you. Do you hold on to the pan? And the fighter goes, "Yeah, of course I hold on to the pan." Okay, <laughs> it's like roll. <laughs> Roll a constitution save against heat metal. <laughs> constitution save failed. Oh no. Now the party has to improvise. Like, that feels like a very D&D campaign kind of thing. Just fuck me the craft, man. And especially, like, as, as, a, as a conclusion to the fight, because, like, the fight is over basically halfway into the episode, like, 14 minutes in, and then all the rest of it is just aftermath. A little more than halfway. Um, but it is this thing, again, of, like, in order for Laios to win this fight also, is the other thing, he has to let part of himself be eaten, Right? That's another thing of that thing that sort of ties into the to the thematic idea of food and consumption that the story is setting up is this this thing of like you are part of the ecosystem, right? Like you eat the monsters, but the monsters also eat you and you nourish each other off one another's bodies. Um And I do like that in order for Lyos to win this fight, in order for him to beat the dragon, he has to let it eat part of him. He has to allow himself to be partly consumed. Right? It doesn't get to digest him, obviously. They manage to reverse it, but, like, just thematically, as, like, a piece of, of, of the... as a piece of the puzzle, that that's the price he has to pay in order to get the killing blow. That, like, that's the kind of thing that makes a fight really satisfying, right? Like, it's... It would have sucked if the plan just worked right it kind of would have sucked we have all this build up like it's the red dragon we need to save uh, we need to we need to save fallon like the red dragon this is the objective this is the thing we're doing i was like uh, and if they had just made the plan and it had gone off without a hitch and they just kill the dragon even if they still find the corpse inside right they still find the skull and it's like oh no fallon has been digested there's a twist what makes the end of the fight and what makes the conclusion of the fight satisfying is that everyone has to sacrifice something for it, right? Like, everyone... Like, it takes a lot out of absolutely everyone to do it. And also, just, I have to say so much about the fucking rendering of Light and Shadow, because, like, they're really only working with, like, three tones, right? Shadow, neutral, highlight, right? That, and then, like, occasionally pure black shadow, but... um, They're only working with that, but, like... The sense of volume you get 
from the things that they highlight, they work with, is like the sense of geometry, the sense of of depth and fullness in the shape of the damn thing. Like props to the absolute massive props to the like colorists and and lighting directors working on this thing because. The dimensionality that you get in these pivotal moments. Like, look at look at his fucking sword here. Look at the shape, the volume, the depth. That all that lighting and all those shadows and all that rendering is giving it as an object as it pushes in. To the dragon's neck. Like, absolutely gorgeous. The rendering on the blood as well is fantastic. Like the that's the way that it's being squeezed, like like slime from a tube, almost like really kind of gross and like horrible, <laughs> and then bursts like ugh. It's visceral. It's gory in a way, like in a way that doesn't feel like shock effect, right? Like it doesn't feel like this is gory. Because it's like, yeah, it's edgy. It's like, oh, it's like a slasher movie. It's like, yeah, blood everywhere. Gore. It feels like it's bloody because, like, that feels true to the brutality of the moment, I feel. What a fucking fight scene. What a fucking fight. That fucking ruled. That was excellent. And then ending it on a memento mori. Mm, mm, spicy. Good. Oh, I want the next episode so badly. Anyway, I'll be, I'll be back when that one's out. Bye.